this is a public service announcement. Please do not let this idiot do your rakers unless he could demonstrate how to properly do it next time. Don't do it the way he did it in his videos. He is an absolute moron. Out of a little something before this, uh, you see the video, uh, you see the regular intro, and I had some afterthoughts. What is, uh, when filing, make sure you have the right file. This is just a short one. So keep that in mind when, you, when you're watching the uh, stroke count on the file when I work on the raker depth. Combination of short file might be a little too fine for the job. And, you know, if the file is worn out or not. This one is pretty new yet. I haven't used it that much. So keep that in mind, folks. The depth is way, way off put it on here I can feel a huge amount I don't know if you can tell this but here's the thickness of the file this is basically how bad it is I don't know how that could even cut so I must have uh, lost track of my uh, raker depths so I'm going to finish up the right side of the chain. What I must have done was I thought I took the rakers down, but apparently I didn't. I know I took them down uh, once or twice. We'll see how many strokes this takes. Yeah, 14 strokes. Boy. I don't know. I gotta check I'm gonna be checking my other saws. I know my 550 is fine because I just did that one. Only one tooth was need to be done because I took a lot off that one time. This saw should really eat now. Just a little bit. Yeah, they're all pretty uniform so far, 12, 14 strokes. The snow that came down last night was, uh, this morning was pretty slushy. Yeah, if it would have been proper snow, it would have been probably oh, a good six inches. I can't believe these are that far off. So, and this is the type of snow that, as soon as you uh, step on it, turns to ice. And... I'm on a slick fest right now here. Good thing it's as warm as it is, otherwise my shoes won't bite into this at all. I'd be falling on my butt. This should be throwing some nice chips when I'm done here. I didn't quite get a couple of strokes evenly.
Yeah, some of you are probably wondering, geez almighty, he's taking a lot off. Well, that's because, for some reason, must have skipped a couple of uh, depth checks. Because I know I, I checked this one quite a bit to see how bad that one is. As I, uh, boy, this, this side's even worse. That was what, 16 strokes? Now that one's good. The 550, I took so much down, I did a couple of sharpenings and only, uh, one tooth needed to rake her down. I must have missed that one when I really took the rakers down on that. These teeth are cat claw sharp. You just got to get the rakers to cooperate. I'm checking each of these teeth individually because it is so bad. I might have a couple of good ones. I don't want to take it on too much. This chain should be good for a couple of sharpenings now that as much as I'm taking these down. I can't believe this. Now with the uh, muffler mod for more power and proper record depth, this thing should be a chip throwing monster for a 59cc saw, 60cc class. It's the best saw made in the Farm and Ranch class, the Echo CS590, otherwise known as the Timberwolf. Yep, best Farm and Ranch saw built. Talking more in between, 
when I'm sharpening that I don't want to lose count because I'm counting so high. <laughs> and what makes it the best stuff uh, farming ranch saw is this right here. Magnesium case. You can actually split the cases and do a proper rebuild on this thing. Whereas a clamshell you can't. Here you could just take the top end off. And I don't know how some of these people claim they can rebuild a clamshell. That's beyond me. It was about 12, 14 on this side, about 16 on the right side of the chain. You would think with a name like Firewood Doctor, I'd have my stuff together, but I don't. That one's good at 14. Might be getting close to the end here. This one might not be so bad. Yeah, I hit that one before good. Oh, it took eight strokes. So it's generic two or three strike strikes every uh, couple of sharpenings is garbage in my opinion. Unless you have a good baseline for the wood you're cutting, I wouldn't uh, go that route. I get this to sit still. And here we go. Almost done. I got one, two, three, four teeth to go. Feel that just a tiny bit. And a little more. That's good. Step away for a second here. Okay. Still 
feel a little bit. And the main reason why is uh, I don't like to just generic strike every one is if you do a quick check and the teeth are consistent, well, you uh, then you could just take, you know, same set of strokes off each one. But when it's as bad as this, I just like to check each and every tooth depth. That's what I call fixing the chain. Uh, between that and a good proper bench sharpening to correct the length of these teeth, then you're going to have, definitely have to go by every tooth. There we go. That one's all done. Yeah, so definitely shame on me for letting the saw get that bad. So now it's going to be cut machine, which you'll see in the next video. I'll be running it. I'd be going to cut now, but this snow and slush it just isn't worth it. Even with the boots I got, there's an extreme risk of uh, slipping and falling, even with the chaps. I don't feel like slipping on something and screwed up my ankle or something, so I'm not going to cut today. And I'll do that tomorrow or in a video or two because I may have. Oh, I've got some other videos to film I can do here. So next time you see this saw running, it's going to be either in the bass. I'll probably run it in the bass one because I get an ash. I got to get that stuff cut up first. So I'll be running it in the basswood. Uh, I'll hardly have, to, I won't have to sharpen the teeth. I'll just, get, just uh, do a quick fingertip check to see if it's still sharp. And then I'll, I'll just go into basswood. It might, in the basswood, as easy as it cuts, I might be able to go three tanks on a sharpening. That's the nice thing about it. Oak, you may have to do as much as uh, every tank of gas, touch it up like, you know, two or three late strokes with a file and that's a big thing especially because it's more abrasive and uh, if you have dirt in the logs that's gonna wreak havoc with your chain sharpening life um, yeah sometimes the more abrasive woods like uh, the old Carter to cut they may actually wear down the rakers for you I'm not sure on that I've heard that from a few places, uh, so there might be some truth to that, that the rakers will take care of themselves. Now, in the softer cutting woods like pine, basswood, cherry, the rakers may not take care of themselves. They may not wear down, although partially take care of themselves. You should always check your uh, depth on that, but in the soft cutting woods, it's not going to wear down, so you're going to have to check that more often. In the uh, oak ones, if you cut the same wood consistently, like if you just do all oak, you know after two tanks you're going to have to take three strokes off. You just do a few light checks with the gauge, just check a few random teeth and couple, two or three teeth on each side, the length of the chain, and then you know, have a good baseline of how many file strokes per tooth to take, and it just, just go that way. And then every now and then on a crummy day, weather day like this, if you have an indoor shop with me, I'm freezing my toes off out here. Uh, just go through the saws, check all the chains, gives you something to do. So I know this saw is going to be ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to see how good that muffler bond works now, now that the chain is proper. I have another brand new chain that I could have thrown on. But I'm just going to use this one until it wears out and then put the other chain on and then save this chain for doing stumps or something when it gets down low enough. So, 
yeah, sorry for the boring video, folks, but it is what it is with this weather. So until next time, take care, get out there, do something, have fun doing it.